start breathing, right, if you go basketball, okay, if I type basketball into the database, you are going to get thousands of research articles, right? So the nice thing is, once you start looking at the research articles and you start going, oh, okay, hypothalamus reaction to training in 100 degree weather in people living in, yeah, I really don't care about that, right? So I can throw that one away. Right? The more you look at the research, the easier it is to find the question that you're interested in. And often, what you might find is, okay, I found heaps and heaps and heaps of information about um, high school girl cheerleaders. But I didn't find anything on high school boy cheerleaders. Typically, in cheerleading groups, there are girls and boys, but all the research is on the girls, and there's no research on the boys. So, maybe I want to look at a similar study, a similar question to something I've read, but I want to look at the boy's response in that situation rather than the girl's response in that situation. So, when we say it has to be original and unique, doesn't always mean you have to completely come up with a brand new question. It means you have to find a way of making the question original and unique. Okay. Sometimes you've got an idea and you're reading the research and you go on and on and on and it takes a couple of weeks and you keep looking and you're like, I can't find anything about this idea. Well, if you can't find anything about it, maybe it's a really good original idea, right? So, you need to start this in that you need to start thinking about what at least would I like to read about for the next two semesters. That's the starting point, right? And then, we can start, we'll show you how to use the databases, we'll show you how to look for research. You're gonna start reading research articles to do my assignments. You'll start to get a feel for ideas that are out there or the way they're phrased, right? So that when you have to hand it in, you've got something that you can hand in and get a grade for. And then we can build on it for the rest of the semester, right? What you hand in the first time around almost certainly will not be what you end up with at the end of the semester. It'll get tweaked. It'll either get tweaked by me because you didn't word it very well, or you'll tweak it as you read some research because you'll read something and you'll go, ooh, actually, if I just change this little bit of my question, that's a little bit more interesting. So, by the end of the semester, when we do our final presentation, you're going to tell everybody in the class what your question is. And what did you find out about it? That's all the final is. It's a load of fun. Right? There's no exam. You just get to tell everybody else what you've been doing all semester. Okay? So, at that point, probably what you have will be a little bit different to what you give me in a few time. That's okay, that's just the process of research. Right? Things evolve as you work on them. Question. Right. Yes? Well, you said your idea is really good and it's original and there's no information on it. So that, in that case, we have to be a little bit clever because that happened to me. Um, what I ended up doing in my dissertation was looking at cortisol responses to exercise in two and three year olds. So what I had was a lot of data about cortisol in children who are two and three in daycare. And I had a lot of information on cortisol responses to exercise in adults. And even some in children who were pubertal. 
but there was nothing anything younger than that. So I took two separate sets of research and I had to blend them in order to make the argument for my question. So you have to be a little more creative if your idea is totally new, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. Right? So it just that's why I have you hand it in quite early in the semester because that gives us time. You don't have to start writing about your purpose question until a week or two after midterms. So by getting it in early gives us quite a few weeks to play around with it and make sure that you have something that you can actually write about. Okay. Word of warning, we're looking at a question, a problem, that is original, that's feasible and reasonable. The purpose of this paper is to review research on balance in volleyball players. It's not a purpose question that is, it's, it would be a good paper, but it's not acceptable for this class. Because it's not an original question, you're reviewing everybody else's work. So a literature review is a valuable piece of work, but a literature review does not meet the requirements for, for this class. All right. So just, you know, if you're not sure, check in. If you want me to look at it before you're handing it in for a grade, send it to me. All right. And I'll help as much as I can. Okay. Last little piece of kind of technical information and then we'll start looking at the, the assignment so that you've got a handle on how to tackle that template for the assignment. When you're reading quantitative, sometimes you'll see variables listed in a qualitative paper, but we have to be able to identify our variables and usually you can see them in that purpose statement. Right? So when I'm looking at variables, I have independent and dependent variables. An independent variable is the thing that I'm playing around with. What am I manipulating? Right? The dependent variable is the thing of interest. What do I want to know about? So, I might want to know whether this particular training program makes my athletes stronger. Because everybody keeps telling me it makes my athletes stronger, but I don't see any research out there that tells me this training program makes my athletes stronger. So, I'm going to check it. Right? So, the stronger is the thing I'm interested in. Right? Can I make my athletes stronger? And the training program is the thing I'm manipulating, I'm jigging around. So I might do two different training programs and compare them to each other. Right? Does that make sense? What you'll find then is that when you read the purpose, you should, as you get more practice, not now, Right? Because again, independent and dependent variables take some practice. But as you get better at this, you'll be able to read the purpose and go, oh, okay, that's the independent variable and there's the dependent variable. I know what they're looking at. It should also be stated very clearly in the paper. I have to say it isn't always, but it should be. When we're working on your questions, you want one dependent variable, okay, and one or two independent variables. Do not bring me a question that has two dependent variables and five independent variables because that is a whole heap of work and there's no need for you to do that. You're a master's student, right? 
You don't have to make it that complicated. The more variables there are, the more complicated everything becomes. So don't go there. And that's hard, because once you start looking and you've got a kind of idea, then you go, ooh, and I can find out about this. Ooh, and it would be really cool to know that. Before you know it, this purpose statement has like 15 things in it that you want to answer. Right? One question. One question. What is the first question you want to know? If you go on to do a thesis, or if you go on to do a PhD, when you answer the first question, it always gives you 15 more questions, right? You answer it and you walk away and you look back and you go, well, now I need to know this, right? So when you do one piece, it leads you to more questions. All right, so far? Okay. All right, so the next bit for the people who are at distance, I have to do, ooh, I could bring, you can scan in on here, right? So if I bring up the template, you can zoom in on the template. All right, I'll do that, because this won't let me load. It will only load a PDF, uh, a PowerPoint. So, Alright, so when you go into Blackboard and you click on Assignments, there's an Article Summaries folder. Click on Article Summaries and the first piece of information is the rules for this assignment. All right? So the template that I've provided for an Article Summary has 19 rows in it, 19 boxes. And you're allowed to type two lines of writing in each box, no more than two, okay? So, in total, you can't write more than 38 lines, okay? If you want to steal, so say under the participants, you don't need all that space, and you've got an extra row, but when you're trying to summarize the results, you can't get all the results you want to say in the boxes I've provided. You can steal a row and add it in. But you can't just add a row. Right? It only allowed 19 boxes. Okay? So, also, your maximum word limit is 300, not counting the reference. And that's generous, all right? So you guys are going to have to get that down into 300 words, but that's generous. Later in the semester, that's going to get tighter, okay? One of the skills you have to have as a graduate student is to be able to read a piece of research and shrink it down into a few words to explain it to somebody, right? So you can't read a 25-page paper and write me an 18-page summary of that paper. That doesn't help, okay? So you've got to start to learn how do I cut an article down into a small amount of words. And it's a skill, right? It's like throwing a ball. You don't expect anybody to throw a ball right the first time you give them the ball, okay? So, you guys have to be patient with yourselves. You are not going to like it, and you're going to think it's an icky assignment. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? But it's a necessary skill. Because in every class, you're going to have to write a paper. And you 
you have to use research to write a paper. So you have to be able to tell your faculty member what you read. Okay. All right, so after that we have the template. That's all right. Okay. What I suggest you do is you download the template and then each week use the template to answer that week's summary and then send me, okay? Um, so, just this is to help me keep things in order. Is it the practice? Is it Article 1? Is it Article 2? Is it Article 3? Name? Put your name. Don't leave name. <laughs> it's, that doesn't help. Actually, put your name. Okay? So, right here, citation, for some bizarre reason, when you put the reference at the top of a paper, they decide to call it a citation. Right? So, when it says citation, that just means the APA reference that we just went through. Okay. So you've got three boxes, two lines, two lines, two lines, six lines to try to get the title of the paper and all that information as your heading. Type of article. So if you did the reading in the APA manual, page nine, she says off the top of her head. Yes, it says types of article. <laughs> so don't put research or newspaper or because when I said type of article, you should know, because you did the reading, that there are definitions of types of articles. Okay? Pick which one you think it is, put it in the box. Okay? Purpose statement. All right, so having said you can't plagiarize, I'm going to break the rules just a little bit. There are two terms right now that you can, that I want you to exactly copy something in the paper. Okay. First time is the purpose statement. So somewhere in the paper it is going to say the purpose of this study was, or the reason we did this study was, or the aim of the research was. However they term it, term it, it's the purpose statement. Okay? I want you to find it and copy it exactly into here. Because the reason for that is, A, that's acceptable. Because it's not your purpose, it's their purpose. And if you reword it, you might say something that wasn't what they meant. Right? Secondly, it's... The point of being able to summarize something is to find the key, the really crucial things in the paper that you would need to tell someone else. And the purpose is always crucial. You've got to be able to know what the purpose of the paper is. So you need to be able to start finding that. Do not, do not copy the purpose statement from the abstract. Because the abstract is already an article summary, right? So now you're copying their attempt to shorten their article, right? Find the real purpose statement within the text of the article, 
put it in the boxes. Sometimes this is somewhere where you might need another box, not very often. Purpose statements are one sentence. Occasionally that sentence rambles on so long you need an extra box, but not very often. It does occasionally very bad writing, right? Okay, so APA reference, type of article, the purpose is, or the purpose was, or whatever they say, the aim was. Right? Next box is tricky. It is tricky. I find it tricky sometimes. So I'm going to say that the research design method can be a little tricky, and that one will take some practice. What you're looking for in this box, and that's why I only have half a point there, right? Because it can be difficult. What you're looking for, it's not half a point because it's not important. It's half a point because I don't want to have to fail you on the paper because you can't do the research design. Okay? What you're looking for here is the plan for how they collected the data. Okay? So when we um, Dylan might have talked with you about this cloud. When we plan a research study, we start scribbling, right? And we're like, okay, what do I want to know? Okay, that's my question. How do I find that question out? What data do I have to collect? Right? So, if my question is, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask female volleyball players at Division 3 whether they prefer to have two male coaches or two female coaches. That's my question. Okay. I can't find the answer to that question anywhere in the research, so that's going to be my question. Well, how do I do that? What do I do? Okay. Well. I'm not really testing anything, okay? I'm just asking a question of this group of people. So probably I could find my population, right? Then I'm going to send them a survey. And then I'll analyze the data that I get back from the survey. So my research plan is just to get all of the surveys back. What if I want to look at my strengthening program? Does that work? No, right? It certainly doesn't work if I want to find out whether a particular program made my athlete stronger. So that's not my plan. <laughs> now what's my plan? The Demonstration. Okay, you do want to go quantitative, yes. Observation. Observation, very possibly. All right? That would help because you could build in some observation about the technique and how the technique changes with the program. How do you know if they got stronger? What's the first thing you have to know? Where they started at. Where they started at. How strong are they? Right? Otherwise, how do you know whether they got stronger? Okay, so that's part of my plan. Because okay? I'm going to have to measure how strong are they now at point A. Alright, so then I'm going to run a training program. I might run two different training programs. Then what do I have to do? You do, but you wouldn't put that oh, okay. in the design. Because this is the plan. So once I run the training program, you've got to see where they're at, right? So I have to test them again. Yeah? Then I can compare this to this. And 
I can see whether or not the program worked. So my plan, at least the simple part of the plan, the bit that I would expect at this point for you to be able to pull out because there's probably something else going on as well, but the bit that you should reasonably soon be able to identify is, oh look, they did a pre-post design. Or it might be called a repeated measures design. Right? That's a technical way. That is sometimes, so sometimes they'll say a repeated measures design, sometimes they'll say pre-post, sometimes they don't say anything at all, and you have to read what they did to work out it was a pre-post study, because they don't bother telling you that up front. Right? Yes? How, how do we know, well, like you said there's methods, so how many methods are there to, like, to, to identify um, which one is which? There's, there's quite a lot. <laughs> um, this book does give you some of that information if you leaf through. Um, there are some other research methods textbooks. The book that you use for 505 is a lot more technical. And it has a whole chapter on what are kinds of designs. Um, so for so for that box, Dr. Wall, would like if we did run in, what would you want that called? It would you pre-post? You, you know, like you said, there's different there's different names. Would any of them? As long, yes, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, whatever. For me, yeah. pre-post or repeated measures means exactly the same thing. So, if you use either of those terms and they collected two sets of data with a block of something happening in between, you're correct. Right? You could even not use either of those terms and you could write, they collected data at the beginning, they ran the training program and then they collected data at the end. That would still be correct and you would get the point. You'd waste a heap of words out of your 300 words saying it. Right? But it wouldn't be wrong. So right now what I'm looking for is can they start, and you might not, right? I don't want this to be stressful. I don't want it to be overwhelming. You have to understand that this is a skill and you've got to learn it. And when we learn things, sometimes we get wrong along the way. And you just, you just got to be ready for that. Okay? Um, but... All, what I'm looking for is, have they got any idea what I mean by research design? Not, did you get the exact right terminology, but can you read the paper and go, okay, research design, research design, what was the, what was the overall plan for how they were going to do this? Not the procedures, right? Not the recipe, the design plan. Participants should be relatively short and sweet. That's why there's only one line there. Right? How many of them were there? Well, that's quite important because if I'm reading this summary and there was only one person in this study, I might not want to bother reading this study. So I'd like to know if there was only one person before I spend my time going and downloading this article from the database. Right? So how many? Who were they? Why were they relevant to the purpose statement? Right? So this should link back. And what you want to look at here is if your purpose statement is relatively global. So if your purpose statement is, um, I'm looking at motor skill improvement in preschool children. I don't have to waste words saying there were eight boys and there were 15 girls because the question wasn't about boys and girls, the question was about children. If my question is, I want to see the difference in motor skills when I run this intervention with boys and girls and, I'll, and what's the sex difference in the learning, 
Now you have to tell me how many boys and how many girls. Right? Does that make does that make sense? So your participant description should tie back with the title and the purpose statement. Don't waste words. Remember you've only got 300 words. It isn't that how many males and females isn't interesting, but is it crucial? Is it key? Is it a really crucial piece of information if I'm reading this summary to decide if I want to read this paper? No, because it doesn't relate to the question. Right. Okay. So, next set of boxes is looking at procedures. Procedures, here we're looking for the recipe. How do I cook these donuts? Right? So, what procedures did they do? Possibly, how did they find their subjects? What test did they run on their subjects if they ran a test? Or which type of survey did they send them? Was there a title? Was there a, is it a specific questionnaire that lots of people know about that would be important if I'm looking at this because I'm particularly looking for articles that use that questionnaire? So what, this is the what did they do? When did they do it? How long was the study, right? Wouldn't be of interest in a survey paper, but if it's a strength training program, I wanna know how long they ran the program, because if they ran it for six weeks, I don't care what they say they found, because physiologically, six weeks isn't enough time to make that much difference. So if they only ran the program for six weeks, um, this is going in the bin. Okay. But if it took six weeks to get my surveys back from the people, I said, I don't care what, that doesn't have any relevance to the study. Okay. So what did they do? Data analysis. Which statistical analysis did they use, if they used one, on the data? So having the, what did they do? Now they've got the data, how did they analyze the data? All right? And an error I see all the time here is people keep telling me which software package they use. But I, care which software, because um, a repeated measures ANOVA is a repeated measures ANOVA. It doesn't matter which software package you use to run the repeated measures ANOVA. I don't, that's not a, do I have to have it in the article? Yes, because you have to tell the readers of the whole article which software was used. I don't know why, it's just tradition, right? Is it absolutely crucial piece of it? No. I need to know that they ran an ANOVA, or a t-test, or a correlation. Now, you might not have enough experience with statistics to know what any of those terms mean. Okay? The nice thing about this is you don't have to know what it means. You just have to be able to find it right now. Okay? Later in the semester, we'll do a little bit of statistics just to try to give you some idea of what they really mean, all right? But if you don't have that background, doesn't mean you can't do this, because you don't have to explain it, you just have to tell me what they used, and you might have to tell me which, so if they used the repeated measures ANOVA, which data did they use it to look at? Did they use it to look at the difference between the two programs here, or did they use it to look at the difference between point A and point B? So you don't have to understand the statistics, you just have to be able to identify which test they ran. Again, I only have 0.5 here because people seem to really struggle with this. And I think that's just, we don't have stats class in the program, 
A lot of you come from programs where you didn't have to do statistics in your undergrad. And so, because the language is new, like what the heck is a repeated measures ANOVA? Right? Well, so you might not recognize it. It might take some time to get used to that idea. Okay. Results, short and sharp. Sometimes the results are very, very long. Sometimes they report results on all kinds of variables that were nothing to do with their purpose question. Okay. Your job is to summarize key points for the paper. And the key results are the results that feed back and answer the question, not all the other fluff that they put in there. So even if the results section is super, super long, chances are what you have to put in here is not that long because you're looking for the results that directly relate to the variables in the purpose question. Okay. Conclusion. Break my rule number two. This is the other time that for right now, I want you to copy exactly the conclusion. Okay. Because when I'm reading the summary, as an experienced reader of research, what I want to know is, at the end of the day, what do these authors tell me they found? Because unfortunately, often, a little more often than I would like, and I'm not that great, so if I'm finding these errors, people who are really good would be finding a lot more, right? Often, what gets reported as the conclusion is this big leap over a wide, wide chasm from their results. Right? They go, I was looking for this, I found this, and therefore, the conclusion is, da -da -da! you're like, Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that has nothing to do with what you told me you found in the results. Right? That means that when I read the paper, if I choose to read the paper, I'm going to read it with a little pinch of salt because the end of the paper is like, no, you don't get to say that based on what you told me you found. That is nonsense. Right? So, you don't want to have to interpret their conclusion because if you change the words, you might change what they said and that's not what I want right now. What I want is for you to find their conclusion statement. Right? And sometimes the paper will say, the conclusion, the authors conclude that or we conclude that sometimes they'll say the findings indicate blah blah blah. Right? What you want to be careful, and again, the conclusion is one sentence. There shouldn't be three sentences here. That's why there's only two boxes there. One sentence. The concluding, the most, the most all-enveloping statement they make about their results should go here. Be careful. Again, a common mistake that I get here is that people get carried away with future studies should look for. Our findings suggest that in the future researchers should do. That's not a conclusion. That's a suggestion for research to come. The conclusion is based on the result. Does that make sense? So, keep an eye on your word total. Right? Your word total is anything that is in this column that is not in your reference. That should not go over 300 words. Um, so really, Dr. Wall, we have 
20 words to work with? 328 or just 300? Well, that was, yeah, that 28 is all my nonsense right. in here. And then you've got the reference box at the top isn't included. So from, yeah, you don't want to, don't literally watch this number because that will, although you won't get deducted if you watch that number because you won't be over 300 words. But, um, what your, oops, wrong way, Sarah, go away. What you're looking for is anything from type of article down in that right hand column. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Uh, the article is the one that we were supposed to do last week, so it's been up there for ages, so hopefully you've had a chance to at least read it once, or find it. Uh, early phase resistance training, strength gains in novice lifters are enhanced by doing static stretching. It's way too long, the title. But, um, I try to find articles that I think, because I would like you all to read preschool articles for the rest of the semester, but I'm thinking you probably wouldn't like that. So I try to find articles that I think, at least if they're not your particular sport, there'll be things that are interesting for you. And across the, the first half of the semester, I try to find things over a wide range of different subjects, just to give you a taste. Um, Anything else? I don't think so. As I said, if you if you draft something out and you want to try to get some feedback before eleven gets due at eleven o'clock on Thursday night, if you need an extension, I need to know tomorrow. Don't be te texting me or emailing me on Thursday, right? Um, if you want to send me a draft, attach it to Blackboard. I have, I'm not techy enough, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know I should learn. I do, and I always promise I'm going to learn, and then I'm so busy I never do. Um, I'm not techy enough to have the whole submission through Blackboard thing. So if you can just attach it to an email in Blackboard and send it to me, I will get it, I will download it, I will type into it, and I will send it back to you. Okay? I'll do my best. Anything else? Um, would, would you mind if we brought it in to you? No, if you're on campus and you want to actually bring it in. Drop it off, give, give you a name perfect. or two, and that be Yeah, fine. that's fine as well.